Chapter Twenty Four A Call Received It had to be one of the most frightening sounds he had ever heard those shivering howls coming from the throat of the huge black carrion bird. More than anything else, the fluidity of the rogue's body was terrifying. It had seemed to simply melt into its new shape. Watching the rogue fly away, Derek was suddenly very certain that this wasn't going to be as easy as he thought it would be. Not at all. He took a deep breath of the cold night air. Cradling his arm, he went back inside. Master Derek, are you hurt? Mostly my pride, Mandelbrot, he answered. I suspect it'll heal slower than the rest of me. Derek's arm was throbbing again, and his head ached where he'd hit the railing as the rogue swept past him. But none of it was as serious as it could have been. He'd seen those teeth, those claws, and he'd seen how the rogue had flung Mandelbrot aside like a broken doll. A few scrapes and bruises were nothing. Nothing at all. Derek sat down on the couch and leaned his head back. We need Woolruff, he said. The city was still in an uproar. He could hear it all in his head. Supervisor Alpha was directing the hunter-seekers to try to track the rogue. But Derek knew it would be hopeless. There were simply too many shapes it could have taken to avoid pursuit. Woolruff? Mandelbrot queried. Yes, think about it. She'd understand these creatures better than we can. At the very least, she'd be dealing with a canine intelligence that is, maybe, more like her own in contrast to her apish thought patterns. That's her problem. The rogue seems to believe it's one of them. Their leader, in fact. Which means it's thinking like them. The rogue's logic is utterly alien. It's obvious that I didn't understand it. He added ruefully. It is still a post intelligence, Master Derek. It was built by a human, if not Dr. Avery himself. That much is certain. I observed it as closely as possible during the skirmish. The skin was definitely dianite, like the material of the city itself, and it spoke in standard. There are certain givens for postronic brain. It may even be that it will respond to the city's orders, being made from the same substance. Yes, Mandelbrot, it follows the laws. Or should, at any rate. I just wonder how it might interpret them. Pack society, a carnivore's moors. Derek took a deep breath. Frost, I'm thirsty. He went to a dispenser unit in the wall and ordered a drink, downing it all in one quick glup. We can understand these beings, not easily, he continued. Blue Roof has a closer infinity to them than we ever will. Besides, you were the one insisting that they should be treated as human. How can we do that if we don't understand them? How are we going to handle this rogue if we can't understand what it might be thinking? I agree with you, Master Derek. Send for Woolruff. Good, Derek nodded. It's about time I made a decent decision. decision. Which hasn't been since Aurora. Still holding the empty glass, he went out to the balcony again, and stared out at the darkness into which the rogue had disappeared. The sound of the rogue's howling still seemed to echo. He felt the skin of his back prickling at the memory. He didn't mention all the other reasons for wanting to make the call, though he knew Mandelbrot would also be aware of them, if too concerned with causing human pain to mention them. Wilruff's outlook would help them, yes, but Wilruff would also bring a ship which would allow them to leave the world they needed to. And Derek wanted very badly to call Ariel. He wanted Ariel more than Woolruff in many ways. Woolruff could also bring Ariel. He sighed again. Derek felt in his head for the chemfet channels and called. Alpha, Beta, status on Supervisor Gamma. Beta responded immediately. Gamma unit inactive after fall. post brain has been taken to repair station and will be reinstalled in a new body if possible. Extent of damage to brain is unknown. A new supervisor unit has been activated. Alpha reports that hunter-seekers have lost rogue. Instructions regarding wo rogue and wolf creatures. You will continue to regard the wolf creatures as human, Derek answered. The rogue is not to be harmed if you do find it, but there is no need to send the hunter-seekers past the city boundaries. The rogue will be back. Derek was certain of that much. Understood. 
Derek could almost imagine distaste in the flat and motionless response. In the meantime, I need access to the city hyperwave transmitters. You should have coordinates for Aurora in the city memory banks. Please transmit the following message. Ariel, find Woolruth. Send her immediately. Imperative. And, I'm sorry, I love you. Please send an answer to these coordinates. And Ariel, I would like you to come with her. Derek. The message arrived at Aurora as a highly compressed squirt, emanating from the Aurora system's wormhole, punched through the incredible distances in the space-time anomaly by the powerful transmitters in Robot City. The weakened signal received by Aurora's orbiting communications complex, the bi charges billed against Ariel's family's account, and transferred down to the planetary net decoded and strengthened. There it was posted to Derek and Ariel's computer terminal. That was exactly as Derek had intended, except that Ariel was no longer there to receive. Someone else was. Woolruff? Who or what is Woolruff? You must answer me. It is extremely important. The household robot didn't seem inclined to answer the query. The inbuilt command against revealing an owner's business was perhaps the most highly stressed program code in its memory, and the second law priority reinforced to the best of factory's technicians' abilities. But there was one higher priority that could always be invoked, and the speaker was very skilled with postronic logic. The word simply had to be carefully chosen and constantly repeated. It is very important that you tell me, Balsack. Mistress Ar Ariel is not an Aurora, as you know. She has left this world and cannot help. Master Derek is in trouble. That is implied by the message. He needs this Woolruff to aid him. I will contact Woolruff, but I first must know where to begin looking. You must tell me all that you know. This is a first law situation, Belzac. First law. Ariel and Derek are in danger, and your refusal to speak increases that danger. This supersedes any previous instructions you may have received. Do you understand? It took an hour of careful argument, and resulted in a badly damaged robotic mind. Balzac would never be of much use to its owners again. But it did speak, the words halting and slurred. Chapter 25 Decisions for the next two days, Derek checked with the city communication center every hour or so, though he knew he would not, he would have been alerted by a chemfet if the message had been received. There was never an answer. Ariel said nothing. That was very unlike her. Derek was certain that even if she'd been furious, she would have sent back some scathing reply. But the hyperactive frequencies were silent coming from Aurora. He hoped that she'd simply decided to head for the planet with Lulruth, that any day a ship would appear in orbit around the world. He instructed the city to turn its attention to the sky, to search the night for the faint glimmer of a ship's drive. Maybe she was out there already, a day or two away after the jump. But the sky was devoid of ships. Derek waited for eight days not eating or sleeping well, and leaving control of the city entirely in the supervisor's hands after giving them firm orders. The city is to cease any new construction and any clearing of land. Remember that the wolf creatures are to be regarded as human in so far as harming them. Do not destroy the rogue. As the days passed, the wolves grew less cautious. The rogue appeared every night on the hillside outside the city, pacing the perimeter and howling in the speech of the wolf creatures. Derek didn't need to know what it was saying. That was obvious enough. And the wolf creatures seemed to realize that the city was doing nothing to resist them. On the third day after the rogue's challenge, the pack made a blitzkrieg attack on a party of workers, destroying most of them before the hunter-seekers arrived and the wolves fled. Following the R Derek's last orders, the hunters didn't pursue the wolves, but simply let them go back into the safety of the forest. The rogue itself made a dash into the city on the fifth night, and dis destroyed Delta, the replacement supervisor for Gamma. The postronic brain was wrecked beyond repair. 
Gamma was restored to working status in a different body. On the sixth night, a hunter-seeker managed to sneak up on the pack and sedate one of the wolves from a distance. But when two hunters went to capture the creature, the rogue attacked from the shadows. The hunter-seekers were disabled. The rogue seemed unharmed. It was apparent to Derek that the stalemate could not continue. It was also apparent that Woolruff, if she were coming at all, would not be there soon, and that Ariel had either never received the message or had ignored it and was not going to answer. That left very little choice for Derek. He was entirely healed now, the broken arm knitted if still a little tender after the accelerated treatment. He had no excuses not to confront the problem directly. Anything was better than brooding. Despite that, he was not at all pleased with the prospect. Mandelbrot woke Derek from his sleep. The rogue is outside the city again, the robot said softly. I saw it in, one, in the distance, walking along the edge of the trees. Did he try ordering it in again? Derek asked. With the help of the city's technical library, Mandelbrot had been trying to subvert the rogue's base programming, since it evidently had a comm link to the city. The robot had been broadcasting orders over various frequencies, but to no effect. Yes, in the robot city program code once more, and also in human speech using recording of your voice, it used the comlink to growl. Maybe you should offer it a biscuit, Derek grumbled. If you think that will work, Master Derek, one moment. Derek grimaced. The robot was already moving swiftly toward the door. Now, Mandelbrot, come back here. Frost, can't you tell when a person's joking? Wait a second, let me get ready. Derek rolled out of his bed and rubbed at his eyes. It's time I went to see it personally. It's time I answered the damn thing's challenge. The rogue's right. One of us has to be in control of things. Mandelbrot's eyes glittered at him from the night darkness. Beyond the robot, the wide archway to the balcony was open. Neither of the moons was up. The sky beyond Mandelbrot's head was dusted with stars. The wolves would be out there now, and the rogue would be with them. Master Derek, I do not like this. I don't either, believe me. Derek pulled on his pants, tugged a loose-fitting tunic over his head. The rogue is dangerous. It has destroyed city robots. It has damaged the central computer. It has harmed the supervisors. It has even threatened you. None of which necessarily violates the three laws, Derek pointed out. Not even the threat. It's in the shape of those wolf creatures. It thinks like them, too. In which case, it is very dangerous. And I must disagree. No robot in such a stained state could say what the rogue said to you on that balcony. Such a statement would cause extreme reactions within my post potentials. Even contemplating such an act now sets up vibrations that I can sense. To actually make such threats meaningfully would be impossible. The damage to my brain would cause an immediate dysfunction if not an outright freeze. The brogue follows the laws, Derek insisted. The brogue is insane. It must be. Its interpretations of the laws cannot be trusted. It injured you the first time you met. Nevertheless, I'm going to go meet it. Mandelbrot stepped in front of Derek, blocking his path. Master Derek, I cannot allow that. I'm sorry, the first law forbids it. This is a direct order, Mandelbrot, and I've already told you, your assumptions are in error. This isn't a first law matter. Step out of my way! I... I'm sorry. The robot's voice was slightly slurred, hesitant. The delicate balances between the laws shifted, but remained in place before the door. Mandelbrot, the rogue hasn't harmed me, not really. It was protecting its own existence, and it made a judgment call that it could move past me. You might have made the same decision, a small bump against the likelihood of destruction. It could as evilly, easily have taken my head off of those claws. I do not know. Derek saw the robot's resolve was visibly weakening. He pressed his argument. The rogue could have killed me in an instant, Mandelbrot. It chose not to. That tells me that the three laws are still functioning, and we're not going to resolve anything here unless we confront it. If we just order the city to build the ship and leave, assuming the city's even capable of such a task at this point, and I seriously doubt that, then we've abandoned these wolf creatures. They're going to continue to try to attack the city, and once we're gone, who knows what will happen? They may well die. 
We've certainly disrupted their society already, and if the city continues to grow, it will contact other packs as well. They're sentient beings, Mandelbrot. You know it yourself. I can't and won't just leave them, and just sitting here is useless. As he spoke, Derek realized that he was also talking to himself. He had just been sitting there, moping about Ariel and Wolruff and doing nothing. It was time to confront the rogue, one way or another. He had to face the challenge. Mandelbrot, I'm ordering you again to move. The robot took a hesitant step aside. I would like to accompany you. Derek smiled. Of course. You always need a second in a duel. Then before Mandelbrot could say anything else, just kidding, of course. All right, there's just one more part of this book. Maybe we'll finally see Ariel once more. Maybe we'll have to wait for the next book. I hope you've all enjoyed and are having an excellent day. Bye!